Hi everyone, this is Victor here. Welcome to the Intelligent Research Channel. At the time of making this video, Meta stock, formerly known as Facebook, is down more than 70% from the most recent peak. At one point, Meta's market cap was at 1.07 trillion. Now its market cap is at 297 billion. This means Meta stock has dropped as much as 773 billion in market cap. This is by far the largest fall in market cap in recent history. This from the Wall Street Journal. Meta stock has fallen more than 70% this year. The company has highlighted deteriorating macroeconomic trends, but investors have also been spooked by its spending and threats to the company's core social media business. Growth for that business in many markets has stalled amid stiff competition from TikTok, and Apple's requirement that users opt into the tracking of their devices has curtailed out the ability of social media platforms to target ads. In this video, I'm going to talk about why I decided to sell Meta stock instead of waiting for it to recover. You learn about whether or not I believe Meta stock is a wild trap right now. I will discuss these topics in this video. First, I will give you a stock portfolio update. You will see my real life scan and loss in Meta. Second, why I finally sold my Meta stock instead of waiting for it to recover. You will learn about Meta's biggest headwinds now. Third, is Meta stock a value trap? Fourth, Meta stock while you And fifth, what are other companies better to invest in than Meta? If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent investing videos a week that will help you become a great investor. Also, if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description and become a premium member. Our goal is to create the best intelligent investor community that will help all members grow their stock portfolios to over 7 figures over time. With your support, we will be able to stay independent and create many excellent stock analysis and investing videos a week that will help you become a great investor. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. I will give you a quick update about one of my gold stock portfolios here. I also have other gold stock portfolios. The stocks are the same. At the time of making this video, the entire US stock market is still in a bear market. The S&P 500 is down 17% from the most recent peak, and the Nasdaq 100, as represented by the QQQ ETF here, is down almost 30% from the most recent peak. If you look here, you can see my overall portfolio is doing fine even in this large bear market, mainly because I invested in many outstanding businesses such as Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Costco, Visa, and Mastercard. All these businesses have large economic moats, increasing earnings, and increasing free cash flows over time. My investing strategy is to always invest in the best businesses that are undervalued. Personally, I like to invest in the best dividend growth businesses now instead of growth stocks because we're in a high inflation environment now. I did make many investment mistakes in the past two years. One of my biggest investment mistakes was investing in Meta and not selling Meta stock a lot earlier. Even though I knew Meta's app business is not doing as well as before. This is because of increasing competition with TikTok and because of Apple's app tracking option that has impacted Meta's app revenue by around 10 billion in 2022. If you look at my realized gain and loss here, you can see that I made a realized gain selling Meta shares before, but I made the mistake of not selling my Meta shares all at once. Then I made a much larger loss selling the remaining Meta shares later on. This means I had a total net loss of $5,800 from selling Meta shares. I think the important lesson here is this. Sell the stock if it's no longer an outstanding business, instead of waiting for it to recover. So why did I sell my Meta stock instead of waiting for it to recover? The biggest reason I decided to sell Meta or Facebook stock is that it will take years before the Metaverse business becomes profitable. At the time of making this video, Meta is still losing billions in its Metaverse business, also known as Reality Labs, every quarter. For example, if you look at the latest earnings here, you can see that Meta's Reality Labs had an operating loss of 3.7 billion in Q3. In comparison, Alphabet's other bets only had an operating loss of 1.6 billion in the same Q3 quarter. Meta's operating loss in the Metaverse business essentially doubled Alphabet's operating loss in other bets. This shows that Meta is likely overspending on the Metaverse business. Obviously, investors are not happy about Mark Zuckerberg spending so much money on the Metaverse business every quarter and using Facebook and Instagram's operating profit to pay for it. In the past four quarters, you can see Reality Labs had a total operating loss of 12.7 billion. Here's the important part. Meta's core business is still advertising, not Metaverse. Meta earns about 98% of total revenue from ads every quarter. Most of the ad revenues are from Facebook and Instagram. 
If you look at this here, you can see Meta is using a large portion of operating income from family of apps to fund Reality Labs every quarter. Mark Zuckerberg said this in a recent earnings call. He explained Meta's strategy going forward. As I've shared before, uh, our goal is to grow family of apps operating income such that even with our AI infrastructure and reality labs investments, uh, we can still meaningfully grow our overall company operating income in the long term. Our current surge in CapEx is largely due to building out our AI infrastructure, and we would expect CapEx to come down as a percent of revenue over the long term. Uh, we expect reality labs expenses uh, will increase meaningfully again in 2023, um, with the biggest drivers of that being the launch of the next generation of our consumer Quest headset uh, and hiring that has been done in 2022, but for which we're going to be paying the first full year of salaries uh, next year. More broadly, beyond 2023, we expect to pace Reality Labs investments to ensure that we can achieve our goal of growing overall company operating income. Our capital allocation philosophy over the long term is to allocate a portion of the profits generated from the family of apps towards these future-focused areas, while enabling a greater return of capital to shareholders. Mark Zuckerberg is trying to create the next computing platform, which is the AR glasses or mixed reality headset, to replace the iPhone and Android phone. Meta wants to dominate the next computing platform instead of relying on Apple's iOS and Alphabet's Android ecosystems. Right now, the biggest reason Meta's app business is not doing as well as before is because of Apple's app tracking transpersing policy. This app tracking also makes it much harder for Meta to target ads and measure how well its ads perform for advertisers. Under Apple's app tracking transparency policy, iOS users need to give consent to allow apps to track their activities across other apps and websites. This is to give more personal ads to the end users. Obviously, most users would choose not to be tracked across third-party apps and websites. In fact, this app tracking option has impacted Meta's ad revenue by 10 billion or more in 2022. Also in Q3, you can see Meta's ad revenue decreased 4% year over year, including the foreign currency exchange impact. If we exclude the foreign currency exchange impact, Meta's ad revenue only grew 3% year over year. In comparison, Meta's ad revenue was growing at double digits rates before Apple's app tracking transparency policy started. Going forward, Apple's app tracking option will continue to impact Meta's ad revenue growth because it's much harder and more expensive for Meta to target ads and measure ad performance for advertisers. This is why Meta is spending billions on IA infrastructures, IA recommender systems, machine learning, data centers, and the next computing platforms, AR glasses, and mixed reality headsets. In my opinion, it's very hard to predict when the Metaverse business or reality labs will become profitable. It may take another 5 to 10 years. Meta will need to sell millions of Quest headsets each year before reality labs or Metaverse can become a profitable business. Meta will face a lot more competition from Apple going forward. For example, Apple is expected to release its upcoming mixed reality headset or Apple Glasses in 2023. This will compete with the Meta Quest Pro. The second reason I decided to sell Meta is that Meta is facing a lot of competition from TikTok. TikTok is the most popular platform for short form videos now. Short form videos have become very popular, especially for younger users. Based on what I know, TikTok is still growing at a much faster rate than Facebook and Instagram. For example, according to this website here, TikTok is projected to reach 1.8 billion monthly active users by the end of 2022. In comparison, Instagram currently has around 2.3 billion monthly active users, and Facebook has around 2.96 billion monthly active users. Obviously, Facebook and Instagram still have a lot more monthly active users than TikTok. But here is a more important metric that shows which apps users are spending most of their time on. According to the latest data here, global users who use Android apps are on average spending much more time on YouTube and TikTok than on Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook Messenger. This is why Meta is investing billions in Reels and AI recommendation systems to compete with TikTok and YouTube Shorts. The downside is that ad monetization on Reels is not as profitable as feeds and stories on Facebook and Instagram yet. It will take time for Reels to become more profitable. The third reason I decided to sell Meta stock is that Meta's ad business is impacted by the slowdown in the advertising industry. At the time of making this video, all the major ad platforms including Alphabet, Facebook, Amazon Ads, TikTok, Twitter, and Snapchat are impacted by the slowdown in the advertising industry. 
Many advertisers are decreasing their ad spending because of many macro headwinds right now. For example, the U.S. inflation is still way too high. The U.S. Fed is expected to raise interest rates further to slow down consumer demand and slow down the U.S. economy. Many businesses expect that the U.S. economy is heading into a recession over the upcoming months. Europe is already heading into a deep recession because of the war in Ukraine and because of high energy and food prices. Also, many businesses ex expect that the demand for their products and services will slow down in the upcoming quarters. All these macro headwinds will continue to affect Meta's ad business in the short term until at least 2023. The fourth reason I decided to sell is that Meta is expected to have much higher operating expenses. OPEX and much higher capital expenditures CAPEX, in 2023. Management gave this guidance for 2023. We anticipate our full year 2023 total expenses will be in the range of 96 to 101 billion. Conversely, our growth in the cost of revenue is expected to accelerate, driven by infrastructure related expenses and to a lesser extent, reality labs hardware costs driven by the launch of our next generation of our consumer quest headset later next year. We do anticipate that Reality Labs operating losses in 2023 will grow significantly year over year. Beyond 2023, we expect to pace Reality Labs investments such that we can achieve our goal of growing overall company operating income in the long run. For 2023, we expect capital expenditures to be in the range of 34 to 39 billion, driven by our investments in data centers, servers, and network infrastructure. An increasing in AI capacity is driving substantially off our capital expenditure growth in 2023. Many advertisers are already slowing down their ad spending because of the macro headwinds I talked about earlier. At the same time, Meta is still increasing its OPEX and CAPEX in 2023, even though many macro headwinds will continue to impact Meta's ad business in the short term. This means we can expect Meta's earnings per share and free cash flow will decrease significantly in 2023. For example, according to Seeking Alpha, many analysts expect that Meta's earnings per share will decrease significantly over the next three quarters because of the macro headwinds. Then Meta's earnings per share are expected to start growing again starting in Q3 2023. To be fair, if the US inflation starts to improve over the next several quarters, and if the US Fed stops raising interest rates by the second of 2023, then we can expect Meta's ad revenues and earnings will start growing again in the second half of 2023. Here are the two most important questions you may ask. Is Meta stock a value trap? Can Mark Zuckerberg turn around Meta? This is only my opinion. I could be wrong about this. Whether Meta stock is a value trap will be largely dependent on whether the Metaverse business will succeed over the next 5 to 10 years. I think there are two scenarios here. The first scenario is this. If the Metaverse business succeeds, which means the MetaQuest headset or Meta's future AR glasses will become the next computing platform, then Meta is not a value trap. In fact, Meta's current valuation will be substantially undervalued. In my opinion, it does not make sense for Meta's market cap to drop from 1.07 trillion to 297 billion in slightly more than a year. For the Metaverse business to succeed and become profitable, I believe Meta will need to sell millions of MetaQuest headsets or AR glasses every year. This is very similar to Apple selling millions of iPhones every year. The second scenario is this, if the Metaverse business fails over the next 5 to 10 years, which means it will not become a profitable business, then Meta will become a value trap. Meta is using a large portion of operating income from Facebook and Instagram to fund investments in Reality Labs every quarter. Meta is losing billions in Reality Labs every quarter. If I have to make an educated guess, Meta will need to sell millions of Quest headsets each year for Reality Labs to become a profitable business. Obviously, this is not easy to accomplish. Also, we have to consider Apple, which in my opinion will be Meta's biggest competitor in the AR VR market going forward. I mentioned this earlier, Apple is expected to release Apple glasses or a mixed reality headset with its Apple Silicon chip in 2023. This will compete with the Meta Quest Pro. Typically, every time Apple releases a new major product category, Apple tends to disrupt existing businesses. Its new products tend to dominate the new product categories in most cases. For example, Apple's iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, AirPods, and Macs with Apple Silicon all dominate their product categories compared to competitors. This is why I decided not to bet on the Metaverse business. Of course, I could be wrong about the Metaverse business. Personally, I'm not betting on it right now, even if I want Marcus Zuckerberg to succeed. In terms of Meta stock valuation, let me show you how to calculate Meta's intrinsic value here, so you will know when Meta stock becomes overvalued, fairly valued, or undervalued now. If you want this calculator, you can download it from my Patreon blog in the video description.
These are the key assumptions in this calculator. First, I define Meta's intrinsic value as its future free cash flow, discounted to the present day. The discount rate is 11%. You can use a higher discount rate here if you want to be more conservative. Meta's most recent charting 12 months of free cash flow is $26 billion. Based on the major macro headwinds and the competition I talked about earlier, I believe Meta's earnings per share and free cash flow will decrease significantly in 2023. Meta will have very large operating expenses and capital expenditures in 2023. After that, as the US inflation improves and as the demand for ads improves again, I believe Meta's free cash flow will start growing at a compound annual growth rate CAGR between 5% and 10% over the next 4-5 to five years. This is from Sikin Alpha. You can see Meta's family is expected to grow between 5% and 12% each year over the next 5 years. Let's go over these 3 case scenarios here. Worst case, normal case, and best case scenarios. Under the worst case scenario, we're assuming Meta's free cash flow will decrease by 30% in 2023. After that, we're forecasting its free cash flow will grow at a compound annual growth rate CAGR of 5%. If we forecast Meta's free cash flow over the next 5 years and discount the free cash flow to the present day, Meta's intrinsic value should be around $324 billion for the entire company or $121 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 25% probability here. Under the normal case scenario, we're assuming Meta's free cash flow will decrease by 20% in 2023. After that, we're forecasting its free cash flow will grow at a CHR of 7.5%. Then Meta's intrinsic value should be around $398 billion for the entire company or $148 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 50% probability here. Under the best case scenario, we're assuming Meta's free cash flow will decrease by 10% in 2023. After that, we're forecasting its free cash flow will grow at a CAGR of 10%. Then Meta's intrinsic value should be around $482 billion for the entire company or $179 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 25% probability here. If we add all these numbers here, Meta's intrinsic value should be around $149 per share. I also use this price to book valuation method to estimate Meta's intrinsic value, which should be around $620 billion for the entire company or $231 per share. If we take the average of both valuations here, Meta's intrinsic value should be around $190 per share. In comparison, Morningstar estimated Meta's intrinsic value to be much higher at $260 per share. This means Meta is likely greatly undervalued at the time of making this video. So what are other companies that are better to invest in than Meta? This is only my opinion, it's not financial wise, I'm just sharing my ideas here. Personally, instead of waiting for Meta to recover, I like to invest in Apple and Alphabet's businesses over the long run because I like both Apple and Alphabet's ecosystems and businesses much more. I do have Apple and Alphabet stocks in my gold stock portfolios. I believe Apple and Alphabet have much stronger economic modes than Meta. For example, Apple owns the iOS ecosystem, iPhone and iPad. Alphabet owns the Android OS and licenses Android OS to Samsung and other phone makers. Both of their mobile operating systems control almost 100% of the smartphone market. Almost all businesses, including Meta, need to invest in Apple and Alphabet's ecosystems. This is why Mark Zuckerberg decided to bet big on the metaverse and to develop the next competing platform instead of being controlled by Apple and Alphabet's ecosystems and rules. Now, all these are only my opinions and my analysis based on my research. They are not financial wise. There are always risks associated with investing. You will need to do your own research and do your extra due diligence first before investing in anything. Thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel. This is Victor from the Intelligent Investor channel, and I will see you in the next video.